the job of journalists is to ask questions, to speak truth to power, to question authority. This has always been a very difficult struggle in the Gulf and the wider Middle East. But this is what Jamal Khashoggi was committed to. He believed with great courage and passion that the way to achieve a better place for his country and society was to strive for an independent and free media. He was a pragmatist who understood well the limits of just how far he could push that narrative on. But he never, ever gave up pushing. He was a brave and dedicated journalist and a warm and very funny man. The first time I met him was in 2002 in Jeddah. And at that stage, I was uh, very interested to speak with him because he knew Osama bin Laden um, and he had interviewed Osama bin Laden. And so we had a conversation about Osama bin Laden. And he said to me, the thing about Osama, Bill, and he said it with that humorous gleam in his eye that we who knew him will remember. He said, the thing about Osama, Bill, is that he just got in with the, the wrong crowd. The murder of Jamal Khashoggi does tremendous damage to the struggle to create a free and independent media in the Gulf and Arab worlds. It has already suffered so many grievous setbacks. To name but one, the Bahraini news site, Al Wasat, the only truly independent voice in the Gulf, was shuttered by the authorities in the summer of 2017 with scarcely a murmur here in the West. In 2011, Karim Fakawi, Al Wasat's co founder, was beaten to death in detention by the police when he went to complain about his house being bulldozed, bulldozed. How quickly Karim's fate was forgotten. In 2017, the UAE sentenced a Jordanian journalist, Tazir al-Najjar, to three years in jail and a huge fine for, quote, insulting the symbols of the state. In January of this year, a Lebanese journalist, Hanan Hadar, was sentenced in absentia by a military court for insulting the armed forces. How discouraging is it that given the rel relative level of freedom media enjoys in Lebanon? Under the guise of security, criticism and a free media is being inexorably crushed. A friend of mine in the region said, it's as if the walls are closing in. We cannot breathe. It has become a grim narrative arc one that began with modest gains and hope for a freer media environment in the early part of this century, but especially after the events of 2011, what's been called the Arab Spring, that narrative spirals downward to the appalling murder of Jamal Khashoggi. It is telling that a chief demand of the Saudis and the Emiratis when they launched their land air and sea blockade of Qatar last June, joined by the Egyptians and the, Egyptians and the Bahrainis, was the shattering of Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera is not without its faults. But thank goodness that Qatar has withstood the siege. Even MBS has had to acknowledge that. And Al Jazeera remains safe. Nonetheless, we are at a very low point for journalism in the Gulf and the wider Middle East. In my nearly 20 years of covering the region, I can think of no time when the struggle for free media has been so grievously wounded and so seriously set back. The killing of Jamal Khashoggi, especially if the man I and many others believe is responsible for his death, Mohammed bin Salman, if Mohammed bin Salman is allowed to get away with it, as I fear now seems the case, Jamal's killing will only empower further atrocities and reprisals. The tame media will reflect the views and attitudes of the ruling families. Those journalists who want to ask questions dare not. And silence will not be an option. Those who stay silent because they cannot stomach parroting lies will be seen as traitors, or as the President of the United States calls honest journalists, 
enemies of the people. In Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain, media is the slave of its masters. It is a new form of Stalinism, Gulf Stalinism, whereby the media is the mouthpiece of the rulers. For the sake of my murdered colleague, Jamal Hashoji, I don't want to end on a note of pessimism, because to do so would be to acknowledge his death was in vain. It was not. What he believed in, what he stood for, and wrote about what he died for, is the way forward. The Gulf and its citizens, and citizens throughout the Middle East, will only realize their full potential in a society where free media flourishes. That is what Jamal passionately believed, and he was right. Jamal is a martyr to that noble cause. Dictators and their lies do not endure. Speaking truth to power, even with all the terrible consequences it entails for journalists, ultimately brings those lies crashing down around those dictators. Thank you, Jamal, for your great and courageous journalism, your dedication, your commitment, your humor, and your kindness. Know that you will not be forgotten and that your death is not in vain. Thank you.